Thank you very much, everybody. This is a, a case where if they can do this to me, they can do this to anyone. And these are bad people. These are, in many cases, I believe, sick people. When you look at our country, what's happening where millions and millions of people are flowing in from all parts of the world, not just South America, from Africa, from Asia, from the Middle East. And they're coming in from jails and prisons. And they're coming in from mental institutions and insane asylums. They're coming in from all over the world into our country. And we have a president and a group of fascists that don't want to do anything about it because they could right now, today, he could stop it. But he's not. They're destroying our country. Our country is in very bad shape. And they're very much against me saying these things. Uh, they want to raise your taxes by four times. They want to stop you from having cars with their ridiculous mandates that make it impossible for you to get a car or afford a car. Would make it very possible for China to build all of our cars. It's a very serious problem that we have. We just uh, went through one of many experiences where we had a conflicted judge, highly conflicted. There's never been a more conflicted judge. Now, I'm under a gag order, which nobody's ever been under. No presidential candidate's ever been under a gag order before. I'm under a gag order, nasty gag order where I've had to pay thousands of dollars in penalties and fines and was threatened with jail. Think of it. I'm the leading candidate. I'm leading Biden by a lot, and I'm leading the Republicans to the point where that's over. So I'm the leading person for president, and I'm under a gag order by a man that can't put two sentences together, given by a court, and they are in total conjunction with the White House and the DOJ, just so you understand. This is all done by Biden and his people. And maybe his people, more importantly, I don't know if Biden knows too much about it, because I don't know if he knows about anything. But he's nevertheless the president, so we have to use his name. And this is done by Washington, and nobody's ever seen anything like it. So we have a judge who's highly conflicted. You know what the confliction is. Nobody Nobody wants to write about it, and I'm not allowed to talk about it. If I do, he said, I get put in jail. So we'll play that game a little bit longer. We won't talk about it, but you're allowed to talk about it. I hope you do, because there's never been anybody so conflicted as this. As far as the trial itself, it was very unfair. We weren't allowed to, allowed to use our... who looks like an angel, but he's really a devil. He looks so nice and soft. People say, oh, he seems like such a nice man. No, unless you saw him in action. And you saw that with a certain witness that went through hell. And when we wanted to do things, he wouldn't let him, he wouldn't let us do those things. But when the government wanted something, they got everything. They got everything they wanted. It's a rigged, it was a rigged trial. We wanted a venue change where we could have a fair trial. We didn't get it. We wanted a judge change. We wanted a judge that wasn't conflicted. And obviously he didn't do that. Uh, there's Nobody's ever seen anything like it. We had a DA who was a failed DA. Crime is rampant in New York, violent crime. That's what he's really supposed to be looking at. Crime is rampant in New York. Yesterday in McDonald's, you had a man hitting him up with, with uh, machetes, a machete. Whoever can imagine even a machete being wielded in a store, in a place where they're eating, and he's going rampant, and Bragg is down watching a trial on what they call uh, crimes, crimes. They're falsifying business records. That sounds so bad. To me, it sounds very bad. You know, it's only a misdemeanor, but to me, it sounds so bad. When they say falsifying business, that's a bad thing for me. I've never had that before. I'm falsifying. You know what falsifying business records is? In the first degree, they say falsifying business records. Sounds so good, right? 
it means that legal expense, I paid a lawyer, totally legal. I paid a lawyer, a legal expense. And a bookkeeper, without any knowledge from me, correctly marked it down in the books. A very professional woman, highly respected, she testified. Marked it down in the books as a legal expense. So a legal expense, paid a lawyer, is a legal expense in the books. It's not a sheetrock construction or any other thing. It's a legal expense. Think of that. This is what the falsification of business records were. And I said, what else are you going to call it? What else are you going to call it? Now, I would have testified. I wanted to testify. The theory is you never testify because as soon as you testify, anybody, if it were George Washington, don't testify because they'll get you on something that you said slightly wrong and then they sue you for perjury. But I didn't care about that. I wanted to. But the judge allowed them to go into everything that I was ever involved in, not this case, everything that I was ever involved in, which is a first. In other words, you could go into every single thing that I ever did. Was he a bad boy here? Was he a bad boy there? And my lawyer said, what do you need to go through? And all you wanted to do is testify simply on this case, because I would have loved to have testified. To this day, I would have liked to have testified. But you would have been... You would have said something out of whack, like it was a beautiful sunny day and it was actually raining out. And I very much appreciate the big crowd of people outside. That's incredible what's happening. The level of support has been incredible. So the whole thing is legal expense was marked down as legal expense. Think of it. This is my this is the crime that I committed that I'm supposed to go to jail for 187 years for. When you have violent crime all over this city at levels that nobody's ever seen before, where you have businesses leaving and businesses are leaving because of this, because heads of businesses say, man, we don't want to get involved with that. I could go through the books of any business person in the city and I could find things that in theory, I guess, let's indict him. Let's destroy his life. But I'm out there and I don't mind being out there because I'm doing something for this country and I'm doing something for our Constitution. It's very important, far beyond me. And this can't be allowed to happen to other presidents. It should never be allowed to happen in the future. But this is far beyond me. This is bigger than Trump. This is bigger than me. This is bigger than my presidency. And the people understand it because I just see a poll just came out, the Daily Mail. That was the first one came out, it was done last night right after the verdict, where I'm up six points. Six points from what we already were. We were leading fairly, fairly substantially. We're up six points in the Daily Mail poll. Now, maybe other polls come out and it says something differently. But a lot of people have predicted it because the public understands and they understand what's, what's going on. This is a scam. There's a rigged trial. It shouldn't have been in that venue. We shouldn't have had that judge. He should have allowed, allowed us to have an election expert. We had the best expert, most respected expert, head of the Federal Elections Commission. He was all set to testify. He was waiting for two days. And when it was his turn, Bragg's people protested. And the judge knocked him out, said, you can't testify. He actually said, you can't testify for anything having to do with the trial. You can say what the federal elections is. Well, that doesn't help. Everybody knows that, but you can't testify. So essentially he wasn't able to testify. Other people weren't able to testify, but with these people, they were able to use people salacious, by the way, and nothing ever happened. There was no anything, nothing ever happened and they know it, but they were as salacious as they could be. And it had nothing to do with the case but it had to do with politics. And do you notice the timing? The timing was perfect. This case was dead. It was dropped by every agency, every governmental board. It was dropped by the highly respected Southern District. They said, no, there's no case here. It was dropped by federal election. And that's what it's about. This is about a federal election, not a state election. You're not even allowed to look at it. They took the state and the city and they went into a federal election. They're not allowed. The people from federal election, Southern District, and Washington dropped the case. Everybody dropped the case. There was no case. 
Cy Vance dropped the case. And when Bragg came in, he said, this is the most ridiculous case I've ever seen. And who would have a certain person, again, gag order, who would have a certain person like this ever testify? He said, this is essentially one of the worst people I've ever seen ever to testify. He said, the craziest case I've ever seen, this is Bragg. Then when I announced I was running for president, long time later, they decided to revive this case. And they got a judge, Judge Marshan, who was responsible for another case that was also brought. It destroyed the life of a very good man, by the way. Destroyed the life of a very good man who went to prison once. And then they just put him in prison again because they said he... He lied. He didn't lie. I looked at the statements he made. In fact, he didn't remember something and they put him in jail again. They've destroyed him with me for many years. He was an honorable person. He was an honest man. And if you look at what he did, supposedly, it never happened. There's never been anything like this over the education of his grandchildren. Over. He didn't report that he had a car or two cars on his income. I don't know. I wonder how many people here have cars. I wonder how many people said, oh, gee, I have a car that's worth X dollars. How do you even figure it? And I guess you do have to report it, but I would say probably almost nobody does. Nobody even thinks about it. They put this man, they destroyed this man, but they put him in jail again because they didn't want him to testify. They didn't want him to testify. That's why he went to jail. They put him in jail twice. He's 77 years old. Now, normally I'd say that's an old guy, but I don't feel 77. Nobody ever says that about me. I'd like them to say, gee, we have to have a little sorrow for this man because they, don't, they just don't say that about me. But maybe I'm better off that way. I think I'm probably better off that way. But they put him in jail twice. And you have to see what they put him in jail. And he was threatened by the judge. This man was told you're going to get 15 years in jail if you don't give up Trump. And he was told that. You're going to get 15 years in jail. And he made a plea deal because he didn't want to spend the rest of his life. And he was told that viciously. We're living in a, in a fascist state. He was told that viciously. So you can go to jail for four months, five months, or you can get 15 years in jail. So do a plea. Almost who wouldn't do that plea? Everyone does those pleas. It's a horrible thing. There's a whole group of lawyers that fight that. It's so unfair. It's so unfair. But they destroyed his life. So many other things. Uh, you look at Southern District didn't want to bring the case. Nobody wanted to bring the case. And then, you know who didn't want to bring the case? Most of all, is Bragg. Bragg didn't want to bring it. But then he brought it, and they tried to make it a different case. They didn't say legal expense equal legal expense. Again, if I wrote down and paid a lawyer, and by the way, this was a highly qualified lawyer. Now, I'm not allowed to use his name because of the gag order. But, you know, he's a sleazebag. Everybody knows that. Took me a while to find out. But he was effective. He did work. But he wasn't a fixer. He was a lawyer. You know, they like to use the word fixer. He wasn't a fixer. He was a lawyer. At the time, he was a, a fully accredited lawyer. Now, he got into trouble not because of me. He got into trouble because he made outside deals and he had something to do with taxi cabs and medallions and he borrowed money. And that's why he went. And then he pled to three, uh, three election violations. And as soon as I saw that, I said, I wonder why he did that. He pled. He took a deal. Now, he took a deal because he wanted to get off. In other words, I'll take a plea deal and I want to get off. And he wanted to make a deal with the Southern District. And they wrote the worst report I think I've ever seen on any human being other than the report that was written on James Comey by the Inspector General, a very great Inspector General, actually wrote a report that was so bad. This one was possibly worse. The Southern District, the judge didn't let us use it. He said, it's hearsay. I said, it's not hearsay. Wouldn't let us use it. This is about the man. 
But he got in trouble for a very simple reason, because he was involved with borrowing a lot of money and he did something with the banks. I don't know if it's defrauded the banks, but something happened. You guys know what it is. And then in addition to that, he gave up on three things where he wasn't guilty. In fact, they were going to testify on that. The uh, head of the FEC, the Brad Smith, the election expert, number one rated in the country, was going to testify. He took a plea on three things. He just added them in because that gave him more bargaining power with respect to me. But the three things that he pled on having to do with the election and having to do essentially a little bit with me, uh, they weren't crimes. They weren't crimes. Nor is paying money under an NDA. So we have an NDA, non-disclosure agreement. It's a big deal, a non-disclosure agreement. Totally honorable, totally good, totally accepted. Everybody has them. Every company has non-disclosure agreements. But the press called it slush fund and all sorts of other things. Hush money, hush money. It's not hush money. It's called a non-disclosure agreement. And most of the people in this room have a non-disclosure agreement with their company. It's a disgrace. So it's not hush money. It's a non-disclosure agreement, totally legal, totally common. Everyone has it. And what happened is he signed a non-disclosure agreement with this person, I guess other people, but it's totally honest. You're allowed to make the payment. Could You don't have to make it. You can make it any way you want. It's a non-disclosure agreement. And he signed that. And there was nothing wrong with signing it. And this should have been a non-case. And everybody said it was a non-case, including Bragg. Bragg said, until I ran for office. And then they saw the polls. I was leading the Republicans. I was leading the Democrats. I was leading everybody. And all of a sudden, they brought it back. It's a very sad thing that's happening in our country. And it's a, uh, it's a thing that I'm honored in a way. I'm honored. It's not that it's pleasant. It's very bad for family. It's very bad for friends and businesses. But I'm honored to be involved in it because somebody has to do it. And I might as well keep going and be the one. But I'm very honored to be involved because we're fighting for our Constitution. The money that was paid was paid legally. There was nothing illegal. In fact, the lawyer in creating the NDA, because at that time he was a fully accredited lawyer. He wasn't a fixer. I never thought of him as a fixer. The media called him a fixer or the prosecutors called him a fixer. He was a, he was a lawyer. And he was fairly good. Later on, I didn't like what he did. I didn't like, for instance, I didn't like that when I became president, he went around and made deals with companies. When I heard that, he was gone. He was gone. And he had payments coming to him. And a lot of this involved things that are very simple. There was nothing wrong. These were standard. This was standard stuff. All Standard stuff. Everything involved was standard. There was no crime here. In fact, I just watched a couple of the reports. You watch Jonathan Turley, Andy McCarthy, Greg Jarrett. You look at all of these people. Uh, Mark Levin. All very talented people. Great people. Many more. Many more. And they don't know me, essentially. They don't know me. They're legal scholars and experts. But I look at them, I watched uh, Turley this morning saying, there's no crime here. Everybody says there's no crime here. Except for this DA that's got the, the city out of control with crime. It's, out of, it's absolutely out of control. So we have an NDA that was signed. We have legal expenses. And here's the thing on legal expenses. Uh, you have... 100 where they say they do a charge. I just recorded this out. Falsification of business records in the first degree. It sounds so bad. I said, wow. And even my own lawyers, I, I get very upset with them because they don't say what it is. They say, uh, well, falsification of legal uh, records is only a felony. Well, that's a lot. It's only a, they say, a misdemeanor but they try and bring it up to a felony if there's two crimes. They have all these different things. 
The other thing is they missed the statute of limitations by a lot because this was very old. They could have brought this seven years ago instead of bringing it right in the middle of the election. So they missed the statute of limitations. They did everything. Now, let me give you the good news. The good news is last night, we just got a report this morning in the history of politics, I believe, maybe I'm wrong, that somebody will find that I'm wrong, maybe, but I don't think so. They raised with small money donors, meaning like $21, $42, $53, $38, a record $39 million in a, about a 10 hour period. No, think of that. I like those people. Because so far, I guess it's backfiring. Now, I don't know. I'd rather not have it happen. I don't want to have it backfiring. I don't want to win this thing legitimately, not because they were stupid and did things that they shouldn't be doing. They shouldn't have brought this case. They were saying it this morning. This is a case that should not have been brought. I watched Andy McCarthy say this is a case that should not have been brought. And that was this morning. But they all say that. Every legal scholar has said it. Every legal, and these are great people. They really understand the law. The other thing, a poll just came out. The first poll, I don't know, maybe others will be bad. But a poll just came out a little while ago. The Daily Mail. Does anybody read the Daily Mail? It's very good. They have a good poll. At least I like it today. And the Daily Mail just came out with a poll. And... It has Trump up six points in the last 12 hours. Six points. Six points since this happened. Who thought this could happen? Because the people of our country know it's a hoax. They know it's a hoax. They get it. You know, they're really smart. And uh, it's really something. So we're going to be appealing this scam we're going to be appealing it on many different things. He wouldn't allow us to have witnesses. He wouldn't allow us to talk. He wouldn't allow us to do anything. The judge was a tyrant. And you got to see that with Bob Costello, a fine man. I've never seen anything like it. And neither has anybody that was in that courthouse where he demanded that the courthouse be cleared. Now, the good news is most of the people in the courthouse were the media. And anybody that was in the media, if you're fair, you'll say, wow. That was anger. That was crazed. He was crazed. And the reason that Bob Costello acted a little bit upset, which I think he has a right to, was that every question he was being asked was being objected to by the other side and sustained by the judge. Sustained, sustained, sustained. I think he did it many times. I don't know what the number is. Many times. Even I was sitting there saying, and these were basic questions. And he, I never saw anybody treated that way by a judge. And I've been treated very badly by two other judges also, because it's all the same thing. And it all comes out of the White House. Crooked Joe Biden, the worst president in the history of our country. He's the worst president in the history of our country. The most incompetent. He's the dumbest president we've ever had. He's the dumbest president, most incompetent president. And he's the most dishonest president we've ever had. And so many of the, he's a Manchurian candidate. You take a look at the way he treats China, Russia, so many others. You know, I ended the Russian pipeline. It was dead. He comes in and he approves it. And he gets three and a half million, meaning three and a half million is paid to the family, his family, from the mayor of Moscow's wife. And I said, where did that come from? Nobody wants to talk about it, but he's a very big danger to our country. And the only way they think they can win this election is by doing exactly what they're doing right now, win it in the courts because they can't win it at the ballot box. So we're going to show them that oh, we're going to fight. It's, it's actually, I don't know, it's something where I'm wired in such a way that a lot of people would have gone away a long time ago. They would have gone away after impeachment hoax number one. That was a total hoax. I had great support from the Republican Party, though. Then you had impeachment hoax number two. And then they formed the committee. How about they formed the committee of thugs, the J6th committee of thugs. 
And they took their records and they destroyed all of the records after the committee was abandoned because those records were great for us. Now, can you imagine if Republicans did that? Everybody would have been in jail by now. The think of that, the unselect, I call it the unselect, they call it select committee, I call it the unselect committee of thugs. They meet, it's 100 percent Democrat and two past Republicans that are no longer Republicans that are no longer in business anymore. Thank you. But it was all Democrats and two wayward Republicans. Liz Cheney and crying Adam Kinzinger. He cries every time he goes on television. He's the most emotional human being I think I've ever seen. And that was our representatives. These two people were our rep. So they had all this stuff that they're leaking. And then when it came time to look at the records, like where the police said and the uh, Capitol Guard said that I supplied, think of it, that I recommended as many soldiers or National Guard as you want, 10,000. If you had 500, you wouldn't have had a problem. There wouldn't have been a J6, but Nancy Pelosi and the group didn't want it anyway. So they have testimony to all of that, that I did not attack the Secret Service agent in the front of a car. You know, these are strong people. And I supposedly went to the driver and I grabbed him around the neck and he rebuffed me. And then I went to the other guy who I think is a black belt in karate and he's slightly younger than me maybe 35 years, 40 years, 50 years. And I grabbed him around the neck and said, he's a black belt in karate. They know how to get somebody from around their neck. They would have gone like this and that would be the end of that. Actually, I had a friend that said, you shouldn't dispute that. That makes you look like the toughest cookie we've ever seen. You should have let that go on. But the fact is it never happened. It was all made up. And that was proven to be made up. It proved to be a false story. And the, they deleted and destroyed all of that information, every ounce of it. We're dealing with a corrupt government. We have a corrupt country. Our elections are corrupt. Our borders are open. Our borders are going to be closed very soon. November 5th is going to be the most important day in the history of our country. Now, when I say that, because my people are always saying, do this, do this, because we're fighting for America, DonaldJTrump.com. I hope everybody watching right now, DonaldJTrump.com, because it really makes a difference. Uh, they have a lot of money on the other side. I don't know where they get it. Nobody knows where they get it. But for some reason, they get money. But they're not on the side of our country. In many ways, I think they hate our country. Who on earth? can want open borders where people are allowed to pour in from countries unknown, from places unknown, from languages that we don't even, that we haven't even heard of. We have people sitting in schools with languages where very few people have ever even heard of these languages. It's not like Spanish or French or Russian. Languages unknown. We have people coming from corners of the globe and many of them are not good people. Many terrorists, record levels of terrorism, record levels of terrorists have come into our country. Record. They've never seen anything like it. You know, there was a report that in 2019, I don't believe this, by the way, the media gave it, and it was good for me, believe it or not. They said in 2019, there were no terrorists recorded that came into our country. I don't believe that. I don't think that's possible. But they actually, 2019 was a Trump year. I don't believe that that could be possible. But they said no terrorists came into our country. So let's say it was close. Let's say it was close. But now record levels of terrorists, record levels, the highest level we've ever seen of terrorists are pouring into our country. You have China with just in the last few months, 29,000 people came in and I looked at them on a line and they look like perfect soldiers. They're almost all male from 19 to 25. It looks like a recruiting exercise. They have beautiful tents. They have propane stoves. They have cell phones, the best you can buy. I said, what's going on? It looks like they're building an army right in our country. Now, I don't think that would happen, right? 
we're losing our country. And I really think that this is an event, what took place yesterday with this judge. Look, we have conflicted, but he's a crooked judge. And you'll understand that. And I say that knowing that it's very dangerous for me to say that, and I don't mind, because I'm willing to do whatever I have to do to save our country and to save our Constitution. I don't mind. So, so, thank you. So we will continue the fight. Uh, we're going to make America great again. Very simple. When people fight MAGA, they say, we're going to fight. I watch Biden. We're going to fight MAGA. We're going to stop MAGA. It's make America great again. That's all it is. MAGA. Make America great again. Our country's in serious trouble. We owe $36 trillion. We were going to be, we were energy independent for the first time ever. And now we're begging Venezuela for oil. One statistic you have to hear. Venezuela was crime-ridden. Caracas, the cities, crime-ridden. Two years ago, three years ago, they just reported a 72% drop in crime in the last year because all of their criminals, most of them, and the rest are coming in now, the ones that didn't come in. In Venezuela, their prisons have been emptied into the United States. Their criminals and drug dealers have been taken out of the cities and brought into the United States. And that's true with many other countries. The Congo has just released a lot of people from jail. Congo, Africa, just released a lot of people, a lot of people from their prisons and jails and brought them into the United States of America. This is what's happening to our country. And it's not sustainable by anyone. Little things like our kids can't have a little league game anymore because you have tents and you have migrants living on the fields. That's the least of it. Uh, people are taking over our luxury hotels, migrants. And yet our veterans, our great veterans, are living on the streets like dogs. They're living on the streets. But migrants are living in luxury hotels and cities all over our country run by Democrats. So it's my honor to be doing this. It really is. It's a very uh, unpleasant thing, to be honest. But it's a great, great honor. We're going we're gonna to do what I have to do. I'm going to do it. And, and the support has been. That's why I mentioned the number of $39 million. That's why I mentioned we're up six points. And we went up a lot over the last month because everybody saw it was a rigged deal. It was a rigged trial. But we're going to make America great again. We're going to make it better than ever before. November 5th, remember, November 5th is the most important day in the history of our country. Thank you very much, everybody. They want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. It's very simple. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. They want you silent. And I am the only one that can save this nation because you know they're not coming after me. They're coming after you. And I just happen to be standing in their way and I will never be moving. Fifth, 2024, justice will be done. We will take back our country and we will make America great again. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great job. What's up, fellas? Hello. 
Good hola, vete, vete el tutorial, hola. All hola. Right. Hey, yeah, what's hola, up, guys? Hola, ¿cómo está, amigo? Oh, oh, hey, tenía el cuca de noche. <laughs> you act like you're from Texas or something. I know. You act like you're from Houston, Texas, speaking ill uh, Spanglish. But yeah, we just heard from Donald Trump is one of the most historical moments in I think our country's history. Uh, let me see if I can get Big Ron in here. No, but uh, we have a couple other people that are trying to get in there. We have Cash Loren, who is our political commentary expert what'd you hear there from trump after his 34 guilty verdicts heard about everything i expect to hear from trump i think he spoke a really clear message he put it on the line of what's at stake for this country this is something that has never been seen before and uh we hope that we never would but uh, i think at this point the gloves need to come off I mean, we have to fight to save this country. And when I say fight, I mean legally and patriotically. I'm not talking about violence. We have to say that because, of course, the Democrats will cut it right there. Sure. But, yeah, it's, 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 it's do or die now. I think we're, we're looking at right now, we're either looking at are we going to keep our Constitution in the United States or are we becoming another communist republic? We're at that point now. We're way past fascism. We're way past socialism. We're now looking at a communist revolution square in our face. Yeah, Big Ron, are you in there, bro? Yeah, I'm in here, bro. How's everybody doing this afternoon? Thanks for bringing me up. Where's your avatar? Yeah, I'm running this thing from my phone. My big fingers don't like it. That's why I've dropped out five or six times. Yeah. I, w I wish I was cool and had a background like you guys. No, well, uh, what'd you hear? I mean, because when Trump gets his 34 guilty verdicts, I don't think you sleep well at night. I don't. I think you wake up in the morning and think it's a bad dream. It's going to go away. But you wake up in the morning and you have to deal with it. You have to go in front of not just your family and friends, but in front of the whole entire country with this embarrassment that you just got convicted of a felony and you're a successful business person that had a flawless record of some sort. I mean, what, how do you think this speech uh, came across to the U.S.? Well, I think I think it's kind of I think it's kind of odd that they still have him under a gag order even now. And it just it goes to show what this whole thing is about. It's it's not about justice. It's not about that the former president did something wrong. It's not that somebody was wrong. It's about keeping him him quiet and keeping him off the campaign trail with as many different uh lawsuits that they've thrown at him in the past couple of months this is the one that finally stuck we all knew it was going to stick we knew it was a corrupt judge we knew that the jury was was going to play into it because you're not going to get a fair trial in manhattan um i think when the judge's uh instructions came out it kind of solidified what we all were thinking was going to happen i don't i don't i think when he came off and said and, and said that it's not they're not trying to silence him they're trying to silence us I think he's right. Um, he's the only one that has in my lifetime, and I can remember as far back as, as Reagan and maybe even a little farther, um, that has really come and stepped forward for the American people to want to to wanna fight for what you know was conceived as our rights. Um, I think he he shook up the status quo. Every picture that you see of all the prior presidents, everybody's happy and smiling, and then Trump got into office and all that went away all kinds of stuff started to come out and they're, and they're trying to stop it. And I think that's their problem. Um, they've just made this man a martyr at, at this point. It's he's going to get elected is my feeling. And once he's done, they, they've got a bigger problem on their hands now because now they've created a movement and it's a grassroots movement. It's not a movement that was created by money. It's not a movement that was created by algorithms. It's, it's a movement that was created by people being fed up in the way everything was going. We were the country that everybody wants to come to, and we still are. Everybody complains about how bad America is. How many American refugees do you know of? I don't know of any American refugees. How many countries do you know that give America money? I don't know of any countries that give us money. So I, I, I think there's, a, there's definitely a bigger issue, and, and I think it's about to be revealed. Damn, dude, that I, you're the first person I've heard that said that. How many people are American refugees? I mean, there are a few that are in Russia, the whistleblowers, but how many people are, are I mean, how many countries are giving us money to help bail us out? It's 
That's a great point, man. I haven't heard many people say that. What do you think, Cash? I mean, uh, uh, John, anybody? Oh, I, I, I mirror what Ron said. You know, we're, that's kind of like the old saying, water under the bridge. Uh, that ship has sailed. And uh, I was just, I was going to try to quote Susan Collins. I can't find the actual quote, but I've never been a fan of Susan Collins, uh, Senator out of, uh, I believe she's out of Maine. Never been a fan of her. Uh, and she even said back in March, she said, I, you know, I, I like some of the things that he did, but I can't get behind him. But after, uh, after that poop show yesterday, uh, you know, she come out and said, she's like, this is, this is not right. Uh, he was done wrong. And she summed it up in, in my opinion, they have lit a fire, not only under, uh, Donald Trump, but they have lit a fire under his campaign. They have lit a fire under his supporters. You look at this man that from 6 p.m. yesterday until midnight, six hours, $32.8 million was, was collected. That's solid. I mean, solid money, $32.8 million in six hours. I wish I could, I wish I could find, and I've been looking, I wish I could find what it is now, but it's like, I, and I said this earlier, you know, it's almost like a, a I guess you could, the, a good analogy would be, that's almost a you know, million dollars per conviction. It's like, okay, well, give them 50 more. Um, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you've even got people that uh, have been on the fence and I've heard this, you know, they're like, no, this was wrong. We thought this was going to come out differently, but he was done wrong. This is clear on what has happened. And, you know, they're, they're, they're falling over to the, to the right side of the, of the fence. And now they're jumping on board. They said, I think the number in cash, you may know this, but I think it was 31, 32% or something like that from 6 PM yesterday until midnight were brand new supporters, people that had never donated to his campaign. Um, and I may be off on that number, but I think it was, it was either 30% or 20%, give or take a few. But I mean, that right there says something too. Um, uh, I mean, we're not even in 24 hours after the conviction was read. Uh, so what Susan Collins said, uh, she, she is spot freaking on Th this is lit a fire and, you know, and yeah, you're going to have, you know, the, the Democrats and, and every, and, and those that or cheering and partying, you know, I, and you know, when they were interviewing Bragg yesterday, I'm sorry, I'm going to say it right here on live. I don't know who that jerk leg was that was standing behind. Say some cuss thing. words, dude. Come on. Say some his, cuss words. Let me hear it his, with his little, <laughs> you know, sissy ass smirk, but oh my God, you know, and it's shit like that, that, you know, okay. Take it as a win. I give you that. Take it, you know, you can take it as a win. It's not a win, but you can take it as a win. But damn, be respectful. You know, I mean, I, I don't like Biden at all, but I can honestly say if this had happened to Biden, I'd be just as vocal because it ain't right. It is not right. What do you think, Vet? From a veteran, when he was talking about the veterans are out on the street like dogs. While other people who just came to the country two seconds ago were in nice hotels and stuff provided by government assistance and things like that. What do you think about that one, Veteran? I mean, he is, he's right. I mean, there's a lot of people, especially in the vet community, with all the money going all over the place in different countries and what's going on here with the migrant situation where they're just giving them whatever they want. It's like, People that have signed on the dotted line, maybe they're not combat vets, maybe they are, you know, it doesn't matter. Signed on that line to defend this country and what, by whatever means, and they're getting the shit out of the stick. They got to fight for, we've had spaces about uh, the VA and, and vets getting their uh, due rights when it comes to medical. And, you know, and they always have to jump through hoops and, and get denied and have to go through other routes, pay other companies to fight their battles to get the VA to finally give in and give them what they need. It, it's terrible. And I echo what John was saying. I, I am that independent voter. I wasn't on the fence. I was going to vote for him anyway. But if I'm, a, I'm registered independent and, you know, I got no love for either side, you know, Biden or Trump. But what they did to this man is com 
completely wrong. It's it's wrong. You know, the the trial, the way the judge put the stipulations. I mean, I've said it I don't know how many times you've got Dems in there that have been proven to do uh illegal things and they're fine, no courts, no cases, no no nothing, not even an investigation. But because they don't like to cut this man's jib, they're gonna like, they're like I don't like him and then it opens up the gate for us to be like Russia, man, where a political opponent you don't like mysteriously, you know, disappears or gravity for some reason pulls them out of a window. You know, it's just like it just opens up the floodgates to where you can try to attack your political opponent by not just, you know, uh, doing shitty mirror commercials, but actually put locking them up. It's terrible. Yeah, Grizzly, well, what you got, bro? I seen you done came in a couple times, man. What you got? I got technology problems, buddy. Okay. Story of my life. I'm struggling a little bit. We'll get through it. All right. Okay. What you got, man? What would you you seen the the Trump speech? Would you how, what do you think? How do you think he did? He did all right. You know, he's the Trumpster. He does he's that's what he does. He's uh he's a little upset, and I understand that. I'd be a little upset. To carry on. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we were talking yesterday about the the Secret Service protection because there is a bill that's uh, trying to be passed is being presented. It is the disgraced former protectees act, uh, HR 8081. Did anyone do any research on that one? I did. I, I no. I seen that you had shared I, it. I, I right? pulled it up, but I didn't read it all yet. Yeah. I, I believe that is a bill that has not been passed. It's uh, a proposed bill. So it's not law. Yeah. I'm looking at it now. It's still in, uh, in, it just says introduced. Yeah. It hadn't gone anywhere. Basically, they're trying to say if he were to be incarcerated, that the Secret Service don't need to go to jail or prison with him to protect him inside, uh, you know, a situation. It would be like a, a worst case hypothetical that would never happen. I think house arrest would be the maximum you possibly could give a president with Secret Service protection. But I think this was passed. So if and when they were going to send him to like some kind of incarceration that the secret service would not have to accompany him in that situation. And uh, I think that it, it'll never happen. But something I did hear that was very interesting is, did you know that there were two people in the history of presidential elections in the United States of America that actually ran their campaign from being incarcerated from federal prison? Uh, the first one was the infamous Eugene V. Debs, who ran for president five times for the Socialist Party in the early 20th century. In 1920, <clears throat> he had the audacity to run for the highest office in the land while serving a 10-year sentence in the Atlanta Federal Penitentiary for violating the Espionage Act of 1917. Debs was a vocal appointment of World War I in the draft, which led to his conviction. Despite his incarceration, he managed to garner nearly a million votes in 1920, making him the most successful third-party candidate in U.S. history at the time. And then fast forward to 1992, we have Lyndon LaRoche, a political fringe and conspiracy theorist who ran for president from federal prison while serving a 15-year sentence for mail fraud and campaign fraud conspiracy. LaRoche was no longer campaigning, having run every election from 1976 to 2004. However, in 1992, his campaign from federal prison gandered particular attention. Despite his unconventional campaign, LaRoche managed to secure a spot on the ballot in several states. So it's not new for someone to run a campaign from being incarcerated. I just don't think Trump will ever see the other side of bar. I just don't think it's possible. What do you all think? Well, first off, you're missing a candidate. Uh, the Tiger King, I believe, is running for president uh, right now from the penitentiary. So we'll see how his bid goes. <laughs> but he's not making the ballot where you can check the box for him. Uh, just another travesty. Just another part of the big government stepping on the little man. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, that's who Ron's voting for. That's who Ron with his uh with his masculine horn on his big commercial truck <laughs> the tiger king w what is a tiger king tiger king uh was it he like the you know the crocodile dundee of like tigers the, there is a netflix series that you need to watch so you understand what the tiger king we can't explain that in this short segment that we've got here it's so many layers and so complicated but uh 
Yeah, he, he does you like being around another uh, series on the Tiger King, but he uh, does. He is a, actually running. He still says he's running for president while he's uh, uh, incarcerated for conspiracy to commit murder, I believe. Yeah, and much like your horn, Big Ron, he uh, has this fascination about other men, and uh, he's in a perfect place to take a look at him. Uh, he is uh, definitely one hundred percent flamboyant homosexual. Uh, Tiger King, Netflix. It's a it's a must watch for sure on Netflix. <laughs> Didn't mean to derail the conversation, but yeah. we're talking about uh, candidates that are running from incarcerated positions. We couldn't do uh, what you did. Modern version of be, you would be remiss if you left him out. I Absolutely, would be remiss. <laughs> hey, uh, Lisa brings up something that I, I I'm curious about. Is the she says gag orders are syst systemic, but how can it be a gag order once a, a verdict has come in? What what purview does the judge actually have over uh, Donald Trump uh, to be able to enforce a gag order? Yeah, a gag order past the conviction. It's like a, a, a part of your sentencing or something that you can have no communication. Well, still, or, I don't know. Yeah, right. he would still have discretion over over the sentencing, but I don't think he has any authority to tell Trump what to do. Like, court's not in session. The, the jury's laid their verdict. His, I think Trump's free. He can run his mouth if he wants to. Yeah, I don't understand the gag order. Uh, that doesn't feel uh, very American either, but I was hoping if I, I don't think Lisa can speak, but if she could answer that as a someone with a uh, legal background, I'd be curious to know is is what uh, uh, what standing or authority does a judge have after a verdict to continue on with a, a, a gag order? I don't think I've never heard of it before. I, I don't believe there is any. I'd be surprised if it stands. Well, I mean, how do you, what's the, what's the consequences? Like, Hey, I heard you were talking about this. So now I'm going to impose like they were giving him a fine when he said something or whatever while they were in court. But what would you bring him back again to give him another charge for breaking a gag order after the fact, after the, every single sentence has run concurrent. I mean, I, that doesn't make any sense. Well, uh, Jesse waters had his attorney on last night and he, he referred or he mentioned the gag order. And now it's like 10,000 and imprisonment uh, until that's lifted. But I'm trying to find why it's still in place, but I can't find anything. He's not allowed to talk about the case yeah. and they really don't want him to, they really don't want him running for president. Uh, what do you think's going to happen on the 11th? Do you think the, that the defense is going to be able to stop this and appeal it before it gets to sentencing? Or is he going to be in there J uh, July 11th for the sentencing? Yeah, you know what? I'm not sure on New York law. I heard uh, a bit of a uh, news report where there was an attorney saying that there was a way that uh, they could appeal, expedite an appeal prior to uh, uh, sentencing. But I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. New York law doesn't represent or doesn't uh, uh, resemble uh, other laws in, in free states. It's it's just communist law. So I couldn't tell you. Hmm. What you got, Big Ron? You seem to have a good uh, grasp on this kind of stuff. I'm sorry. What was the question? We're talking. We're talking about the can they appeal it before July 11th, so they never have to go to sentencing? Or is gotcha, he, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. I'm. I'm with. I'm with Joe on this one. Um. It's hard to tell. I mean, New York is not following any kind of a law. It's like they're making this stuff up as they go, and they're just throwing stuff at the dartboard. I mean, all, this should have never gone to trial. It was, at best, it was a light misdemeanor. So I, I'm with Joe on this one. Who, who knows? I mean, hell, they can come back tomorrow and say, well, it was 34 charges. Um, in the state of New York, even though execution's not legal, we're going to issue the death penalty. So who knows? Yeah. What do you think, Cash? I think this has got to go to the Supreme Court. If anyone has any faith in the appellate court, I was doing some digging in that, and it looks like the appellate court that he'd be facing has uh, five black women on it. And so don't hold your breath for that one. I I think the Supreme Court has to step in and uh, save Trump. I think that's only what this has to come to. I don't think he'll get any justice in New York anywhere. I did read that last night, and there were some pictures floating around of the, the five Supreme Court justices that they have there in New York. 
I haven't had a chance to research them though to see what their their uh, their style of of conviction and non conviction is. But I'm I'm assuming by the way the judges act in New York, they're probably going to be down the same line. That sounds a lot better than what Cash said. <laughs> Uh, I was watching Fox News, and uh, I think Joe was talking about the person that said that you can kind of expedite it and go straight to the Supreme Court for whatever reason because it's a federal law for campaign contributions. So that's not a state jurisdiction. It's a federal. So somehow they could appeal it and fast track it to a Supreme Court. That I think it was a, a lawyer named Wu or you or something like that on uh, Fox. But did you see that one, Cash? I haven't seen that specific report, but I've seen others talking about it. And I think that's the only justice that Trump is going to get is, is the Supreme Court has to take this. I mean, they they bowed out on the on the voter fraud charges and whatever people think about those. But they chose not to hear those cases. And I think at this point they have to hear this because this what they're doing to Trump is it's not constitutional. It's not right. I think everybody knows that even the Democrats know it. They just don't care. They just hate Trump so much. That this is this is what a communist revolution looks like. We're seeing it happen in America right now. This is going to be one of those moments, just like September 11th was for me, where I can still remember where I was, what I was doing, and who was there. 20 plus years later, and that's what's going to be like the next generation with Trump right now. The country's under attack, and the attack happened in New York. <laughs> so, I mean, what are we saying? We're saying that the Trump conviction is on, in par with uh, the terrorist attacks on 9-11? I wouldn't say that. I would say no, 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 no. Hold on. I don't know how you got that from what I say. I'm man, I miss no. I'm saying you that said this 9 is 11. Be, well, I, I'm saying I, that this I, I got there. You said that I'm. This is like 9 11. I remember when I was at, where I was at when Trump was convicted. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Exactly. This is going to be a moment for this next generation where people are going to remember where they were and what they were doing. When this happened because this is going to have the impact on the generation. I think that happened just like on September 11th or people for World War II. This is going to be one of those major moments in U.S. history that everyone's going to remember where they were and what they were doing. Yeah, I think the only difference, well, the major difference in this one, not the only, the major difference is when 9-11 happened, whatever you were doing, you were like, holy shit, the America is under attack. We are actually at war and it happened on American soil and everyone came together. This situation is different because it's like, Oh my, you know, oh my God, something just happened. It's like similar, but America is divided in half because of it. So that's where I think is the major difference here. I, I don't see it on as a an event as as a nine eleven, and it kind of depends to me what happens after this. If everybody sits back and thinks that Donald Trump is the great white savior, going to ride in a white horse to save America, then we've we've gained nothing. This is for naught. That's not going to happen. Not one man can do it. It's going to take all of us. We've got to get together as Americans and we've got to change. There needs to be uh, the nameplate uh, uh, manufacturers and, and contractors that work across assembly houses and in, in, in Congress. They need to be busy overtime come January. Every nameplate needs to be changed. I don't care if you stand in for you, how, how big you put the fight up. I don't care. Uh, we need new names in there and we need new blood in there and, and we need representation from the people. But if we as the people don't demand it, then this is all for naught. Trump is not going to save anything. He can't pass one damn law if he's, if he's elected president. He can't pass one law. Uh, he can only influence some legislation and he can be the executor. But it will go through a four year cycle, pass through the Democrats, get their business together. And we're just back in the same cycle we've been in since, honestly, the, in my opinion, since 1991. Uh, we, we've got to we've got to come together as American people and forget what damn party we're voting for. Start voting for some representation, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I, per, I don't want to step on someone who has something to say, but the I, I think this will be the first American president if Donald Trump is reelected. I, I know he's not going to jail and all that kind of stuff. We can hypothetical that, but uh, this will be the first American president that actually had a really good taste of what the justice system is like. And we can say this is an isolated incident, but this shit happens all the time, all over America. So 100%. You are absolutely correct. So the, the, very, bikes. the very first president that actually experiences it, I think he will be the person who brings justice reform to America because he knows it firsthand. I think that's why he'll be the greatest president in this in this next term, assuming he, he gets elected. 
and I don't want to step on anyone else, but I do want to say this. Donald Trump can only control the federal government if he's elected as president. He could institute justice reform on the federal level, but that would not touch him under the state laws that uh, our friend Dexter Taylor has been convicted under. Um, uh, the, the, the system that he was just convicted under, that's a state system. There needs to be an overhaul from state houses on up. Honestly, probably from city councils on up, in my opinion. This, the corruption runs a lot deeper than just the federal government. Yeah. And I've got some clarification on the gag order. So the gag order that uh, Merchant put on him, uh, for all intents and purposes, has been uh, lifted. However, this part of it will stay in place. Uh, any names, businesses, and residential addresses of the jurors. And I had forgotten about this, but uh, his attorney hit on this yesterday. But he's under a separate gag order for the uh, of the cases that are to be heard in Washington, D.C. Uh, Judge, uh, I can't pronounce her last name, Chuck in, in Washington, D.C. has put a gag order. So I think when that was mentioned, I, I think the, the question had something to do with the upcoming trial that he's that he's facing so he he is still under that gag order uh but as far as this case here they just can't talk about businesses names or anything about the jurors yeah what about the 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 treatment that trump is getting as far as like the when we said he's going through the experience he's not going through the real experience because you're not going to take a book in you former law enforcement officers know what i'm talking about you're not taking a book in photo with your suit jacket on <laughs> you know what i mean and you're definitely not walking through there in 10 minutes and being done with it that's for sure but the second one is is when the federal when the uh court comes back and the jury reads guilty there is definitely a bailiff and maybe an officer or two that are right behind you and you're not leaving that courtroom to, uh, five minutes later you're going right to the little pokey poke and that's it so that's what would happen to a normal American. So he's definitely getting different treatment. I mean, it's just anyone who knows the system knows that he's getting different treatment. That's why it's, you know, that he's not going to be going to incarceration. There's just no way. Now you're absolutely right. Any other American would have had handcuffs put on as soon as the, the verdict came through. They are in the state's custody from that, that point forward. Uh, Donald Trump did not experience that. No. But he did experience a guilty verdict. And when he came out to address the people who were, you know, the little microphone, the microphones in the press that were right outside the courthouse, it looked like he had this kind of a thing on his nose that maybe he had like a pen pressed up to his nose for about longer than five minutes. He had this thing. It's like, you know, I could just only imagine because they read off uh, on the, you know, this and this case and this and this and on this and this charge, this and this, the, the jury uh, finds the defendant guilty. But then you have to sit there and listen to that same exact thing repeated 34 times. That had to have been torture, dude. That had to have been torture. <laughs> yeah, especially when they're hitting you with uh, guilty counts. And that's... <laughs> Yeah, That's like what? Tough. As soon as the first one's guilty, you just know the second. I mean, after you're on the tenth, after you've done heard it ten times, I mean, the rest is just torture. It's like it doesn't matter if it's fifteen instead of twenty or twenty instead of thirty-four. I mean, as soon as you hear the first one, you already know the rest of them ain't gonna be good. <laughs> No, that's true. Actually, I'm kind of surprised. I I dropped my Trump's not our savior. We got to save ourselves. And Cash didn't respond to that at all. Cash, you're not gonna come through and put a cape on Trump. I was waiting for my turn. I didn't want to talk over you guys. Uh, you, got, you got to take your turn in this crowd, baby. There's no, there, nobody yeah. takes a number. We cut people off right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, movements, they grow around a leader <clears throat> and people will surround themselves around a leader. And that's really how it works. So can Trump be a one man show? No, but he's not a one man show. He's building an entire movement. That's going to change an entire generation. Just like the Reagan revolution did. We're going to see a MAGA move it like something this country has never seen before. So that's my response is that he, you know, he is a leader and he is one man, but people are going to surround him. People are going to join him. People are going to follow him. And that's going to cause a whole new generation of leaders. We're seeing it all throughout the younger crowds, which are typically Democrat, are going more and more Trump, especially on the male side. And then we're seeing like black and Hispanic voters. They are jumping over to Trump's side now in record numbers. 
that has never been seen before because people see this for what it is. Yeah, that's super true. Like anyone who's saying that there's social injustice or they've been against me or people who look like me or people whose skin color is like mine, people have always been systemically after me for this reason and that, and we've had unfair treatment. I think if you look at the two candidates that are both white men that are 70, 80 years old, somewhere in between them two, and you're saying which one identifies with me and people like me and people who've experienced things like I've experienced, how can you say Joe Biden? I mean, Donald Trump is going through it, and I think he's won the the black vote. I think he's blung, uh, won the marginalized vote. I think he's won the people said, I don't think I have a voice and everyone's out to get me. I think he's won their vote. Uh, this right here, I believe, is backfired. And you're seeing a lot of this on X and uh, social media and even Facebook because like like X is all about political kind of stuff. But when you go to Facebook, a lot of people are more reserved and they don't really speak as much of political stuff. But I, the, in the last day or two, I, I mean, excuse me, yesterday, there has been a lot of people that said, you know, I don't care. I'm voting for Trump. And you're seeing a lot of flags that are upside down. There's a new trend of uh, people that they're coming out and saying, I'm voting for Trump. I'm tired of being silent about this. I'm voting for Trump. It, it, it's not just that. Like, there's people here who are immigrants, and they have escaped socialism. They have escaped communism. They see a revolution for what it is, and that's that's a I think a part of a problem in the United States is that is that we don't talk about communist revolution enough and what it looks like. And this is happening so fast that I don't think a lot of people have put the pieces together yet. But people who have come from other countries who've seen it firsthand, who have seen who have seen like a communist revolution happen in China, or they've seen socialists take over in Venezuela, they see this for what it is. And this has completely changed, I think, the demographics where the Democrats have always thought that they had the rights to everyone who's not white. And now everyone's seeing this for no, they're they're not on our side. And they're seeing for what's happening when a leader tries to put another leader in prison. And then what's range of mind is saying something about a uh, Reagan. So we're going to go back to more gun rights, man, you guys and your gun rights. It's, it's all. It's, it's well, always, we, uh, we apologize uh, if our right gets in the way of your political movement. My apologies. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And so, um, <laughs> keep going cash. You got it. Don't let, don't let Joe Lanou slow you down. You got it, bro. Oh, uh, no, they, they're, we don't care about those gun rights. Go ahead. Go ahead. Cash. <laughs> that is not what I'm saying. And all of you know it, but it's pretty funny either way. And so well, even both, both were presidents over uh, some sweeping legislation that did reduce uh, a person's right to own a firearm. You know, that's something we should talk about maybe on Sunday night when we do our show, uh, Joe, is that we uh, talk about the bump stacks that we'd brought up previously. And then the legislation went through it because, uh, when people bring up stuff that they don't like about Trump, the the um those don't come up very much. Usually it's something else. And uh, so I had to kind of go back and do a little bit of research and reading on it. And I think we should talk about it Sunday night. There you go. There you go. Uh, what you'll find out about myself and especially my night court crew, we will talk about uh, Second Amendment rights any day of the week. And all throughout the day. But yeah, the range range minded podcast brought up a good point. I mean, uh, uh, you know, gun rights, the second amendment is a very important topic for a lot of people, a lot of Americans, obviously. Uh, but there was other constitutional rights that were infringed upon in this Trump case. And one of them was the sixth amendment, uh, the fourth amendment. There was a lot of constitutional amendments that from the, from the siege and seizure of Mar a Lago, to the not knowing what you're being charged for until they're reading the very final thing, the sixth amendment, there was a lot of constitutional amendments that are, you know, just as important that are being fringed upon and stepped on there in New York, besides just the second amendment, the first amendment with the gag order. There's a lot of constitutional rights that are being stripped away from him. And now the second amendment, which is very important that you just brought it up. That has also been taken away from Donald Trump. He no longer has the Second Amendment. He is not allowed to own a firearm. He's not allowed to be in the presence of anyone who's been convicted of a felony. Now there's a lot of other thing, constitutional rights that he no longer has as of yesterday. Yeah, right. There's many Americans that have gone through the exact same process that Donald Trump's gone through, that nobody's pulling together a space 
or a uh, live stream to talk about the injustices about that average American. And I, I posted, I, those of you guys that follow me on X, I post every morning a, uh, a morning founding father freedom loving quote. And I chose one this morning specifically for uh, the, because of the Trump's verdict last night. And it's uh, by Thomas Jefferson. It's, it's the people are the only sure reliance for the pres preservation of liberty. What Thomas Jefferson said back in the 1700s was the only people that are going to keep us free are ourselves. We can't rely upon a political figure. We can't rely upon a political par party. There's nobody that's going to come save us and protect us, protect our rights. If you're in government, by pure nature of being in government, you're going to squeeze our rights for the sake of administration, administrative processes. It's easier to, to administrate a government when everybody falls in line. You have to follow these rules. Take a number, stand in line, and, and, and we'll dole out your bread when it comes to it. But our, our founding fathers, people who wrote the document, created this country, created the government that, that governs us now, uh, let us know that we have to be the ones to stand up. And my fear is that we get behind it. We, we, we advocate for Donald Trump or any other politician, and then we go back to our normal lives and we don't oversee what's happening there. I think that's where our problem is in this country is that we've relied upon our political party or our candidate to go do what's right for us. And the fact is the matter fact of the matter is they don't go do what's right for us. Go back to the bump stocks. That was an executive order. The same thing that we complain that Donald Trump's doing. I mean, uh, Joe Biden's doing through executive order. Donald Trump did the exact same thing, which proves my point. Once you go into government, you kind of become the enemy of the people unless we keep you in check. True. You got to vote this November. I mean, that, it's that simple. Uh, Vet, Grizz, or Ron, y'all got something, brothers? On this constitutional uh, uh, infringement on these uh, amendments that are clearly just disregarded in New York? Well, you know, you were talking about Trump having, he's got another case um, pending in D.C. And I guess one of my questions about that is, is D.C. is not a state. Nor is it a federal jurisdiction. So what charges are they bringing them up on? I mean, all their license plates there say taxation without representation. Yeah. So are they just like making stuff up and it's like, hey, guess what? I'm the Supreme Lord now. That's true. Taxation without representation. I do. That is familiar. I've lived in Northern Virginia. I have I've seen those a million times. Taxation without representation. Uh, speaking before we go too far, far I want to do uh, do want to point out that Cash Loren, if you're listening, the 182 people that are listening right now, Cash Loren is only 13 follows away from 5,000 on X. So definitely uh, follow our friend Cash Loren if you want to hear more about Donald Trump and what's going on between now and November 5th, Election Day. Right? Uh, Cash, how close is Cash to 5,000? 13 we should be able to do that for this broadcast ends folks go give cash a follow my goodness on x give him a mercy follow if you have to yeah. uh, i get it <laughs> i gave him a mercy follow as well but we should be able to hit 17 mercy. that's nothing 17 we should be able to hit that man at five thousand uh before this 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 uh stream ends yeah if you're uh, his account cash i it's at the cash lauren show i'm currently at 14 away from five thousand. I'll i'll take whatever <laughs> followers i can get mercy or yeah yeah, hit him with your your secondary account. You know the the one that you have for backup. Hit him with that one too. <laughs> I had to recover a password for my photography Twitter that and it was last time I posted was 2015. So I had to do a password recovery. But I, I followed Cash Warren Show. So uh, hey Ron, so on your question, so apparently, and I'm using legal terms here, <laughs> DC charges alleged a plot to subvert the transfer of power after the 2020 presidential election. So he was charged with four counts in August of 23 and pled not guilty for not turning over power. But I don't see how that's, that's even possible because as we all remember come inauguration day, Biden raised his, his right hand or the hand he thought was his right hand and took the oath of office. And there was a transfer of power. I don't know. I, well, you got to remember too. This it's north of of Virginia or West Virginia, for that matter. So all bets are off. I can talk about that a little bit if you like. 
Uh, so what they're trying to connect there to is the transfer of power, what was not stopped, which is January 20th, when you actually transfer power. They're trying to say January 6th that Trump ordered an insurrection and a, and a coup to stop the transfer of power and then send the electrical ba- electorials back, which we all we all heard him. I mean, peacefully and patriotically, he said, obey the law. You know, he told everyone to be peaceful. Uh, they're trying to hide that he called for National Guard and it was rejected. And so this is this is another thing that's happening in New York. Is Washington D.C. is probably the only place in the U.S. that's more blue than New York. And so they're going to try to get a jury that hates Donald Trump's guts with a judge that's an activist judge, and they're going to try to put Trump in prison. Now, well, work. I don't think so because I think the Supreme Court is already stepping in there and will continue to do so. I don't think that will ever actually happen, but that's what they're going for. Is they're trying to say that Donald Trump tried to overthrow the government on January 6th. You know, it's kind of funny that they say that. Um, and if my memory serves me correctly, and let's not uh, let's not depend too much on my memory because we all know that I'm a retired sailor, so I've poured lots of bourbon and rum on my brain over the years. Um, didn't they do the same thing with Kennedy's election uh, with the electors where uh, – they didn't use the elector, the votes that the electors had. They went a different direction, and that's exactly how Kennedy got elected. I don't remember specifically on Kennedy, but every single uh, election, presidential election, the Republicans have won. The Democrats tried to do exactly what Trump did, and, and but none of them were ever charged and went to prison. I mean, it's, it's not against the law, is the thing. I, the, if you believe that election was fraudulent, whether it's true or not, you have the right to pursue it, just like Hillary Clinton did, just like Stacey Abrams did down in Georgia, and just like Donald Trump did. I mean, he's never wavered from that. He said right from the get-go that he feels the 2020 election was rigged. He did. Right? We've, all, we've all heard him say that a million times. Whether would, you agree with him or not, you know that's how he feels. I would go a step further than to say that he has the right to I, he's if he's a sitting president, he has an obligation to the people of the United States, right? He's the one that's supposed to be out there. He's the he's the leader of the executive branch. He's the leader of the Department of Justice and the military. He's supposed to be looking out for the United States in the, the American people. And if he be, if that's what he believes, then that's what he should be asserting, right? That's my view on that. Yeah, and I seen something just interesting. Were you guys watching this feed where Donald Trump was in the back of a limousine and there was two limousines and then it had a F three fifty dually and another car behind it in a motorcade? Did you just see that? No. I wasn't I wasn't paying attention to the feed. I didn't see it, no. Yeah, so it had Donald Trump that he was I mean, by looking at the left side of the screen, it looks like he might be inside the building, but it was a limousine and they had somebody that looked like Trump with a hat on. He rolled down the window. He was sitting there waving and they had it on camera and it was just two limousines. It was, he was in the one in the back and then it had some like Dodge Dooley behind him and one other person. It's like, where's the presidential motorcade anywhere you go? that, That couldn't have been Trump, right? Or he doesn't have a motorcade. No, he's got one. Yeah, I mean, because they have the two different shots. One, it's looking at the door like he's going to come out. But uh, this was uh, two limousine, presidential limousines, and Donald Trump, it looked like he was in the back with his hat on waving. So I was like, hold on, what happened here? Just noticed that. You're a pretty sharp fella, Kingdom. So I was trying to, you know, we were talking about uh, him losing some rights. And, you know, there's that uh, case that's, uh, I don't know if it's being heard, but it's about to be heard for nonviolent felons, uh, to have their firearm rights restored. Uh, and it looks like that's probably going to pass. So I don't, where's this at? So there's a couple of States that have heard it, uh, and agreed. Let me see if I can take this back to where I was just talking about. Um, go ahead. So it looks like in this, believe it or not, in the state of Washington, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled people convicted of nonviolent crimes who have finished their prison sentence are allowed to own guns. And if in is right there, is that him? Is that just someone that looks like him? Yeah, I, I can't. I can't tell from here, but it, it 
doesn't look like a Trump motorcade to me. It has a presidential seal on the on those limousines. Let, let me back it up just a little bit more. Let me see here. It's right here. So it's two different uh, limousines, and they have the presidential seal on it. It's just two limousines. There's no police escort whatsoever. And there's police that are walking by. See, it has the flags on it and everything with a presidential seal. And there's a person that's in the back of the limousine waving with a Donald Trump red hat on. And it looks like the person's waving out the door. And they close up, uh, do a shot on him. Looks like him. No presidential motorcade. I don't think that's going to be him because I wouldn't, I don't, I don't think he can ride around with the window down. Well, he could walk down the streets of DC. Well, they, yeah. They've done that before, but that looks like a personal vehicle behind him. I wouldn't say a personal vehicle. I think the better question is, does that dually have a minigun in the back, which you can't see? Yeah. Well, it's all about, you know, the, the, People were talking about they're going to take away his uh, uh, Secret Service security detail. And then here you are the next day. I mean, maybe he's still in because the left side of the screen is showing that people are waiting for someone to come out. For some reason, AP has it on there. But you definitely have a, two presidential limousines with the seal. That'd be weird if it was impersonating a presidential limousine as a decoy. But uh, to have Donald Trump into a two limousine and they don't even have a, a police escort or a presidential motorcade uh, the day after the felony, that's, I don't know, definitely puts a question mark. I mean, you're followed yeah. by some redneck and a dually with some flags and stuff. Yeah. It's like, oh. I, I don't think the Secret Service would be comfortable with that uh, situation. And I know it's got seals on it, but they, they could say, you, MAGA USA on them or something. It may not be an official uh, presidential seal. Oh, yeah. Just a limousine I'll, company that I'll has have, a seal. Yeah. I'll have to tell y'all my, my encounter with Secret Service one day. It was it's funny now, but it wasn't funny then. Right. Hey, I folks, I want to take them a second and uh, put a shout out to our friends at the Foundry Holster Company. I've got, if you look at the banner, it's uh, founderholstery.com. I'm sorry, Foundry Holster Company, CO, uh, dot com. These folks is a veteran-owned company out of North Carolina, a small family-run uh, business. These guys make custom holsters for all you 2A fans out there. If you're looking for a holster, both uh, inside the, the waistband, outside the waistband, or even uh, low slung, there you go. There's the website there. Uh, go check them out at foundryholster.com, uh, foundryholstercompany.com, and uh, tell them Joe Lanou sent you. Uh, they're a new uh, sponsor of the Night Court Show for us. We're very proud to have them on board. Uh, and their quality is second to none. I think uh, John can attest to that. He actually has a foundry holster that was custom made for himself. I do and love it. Cool. Rock and roll. Good plug there, Joe. Yeah, Foundryholster.com. Thank you very much. And uh, I, before we leave here, I also want to let everybody know about our Night Court T-shirt of the month that goes out in June. You got till June 3rd to get your orders in. Uh, anybody that's interested, give me a DM. I'll throw a picture up of the, the first shirt that's coming out in uh, June, and we'll pick another one out in July. We'll have it out by July 4th so you can so, show that you're a freedom-loving American on uh, Independence Day 2024. Yeah, what you got on that, Grizzly, Greg? That's uh, 100% a, a stocking stuffer, if you will, huh? Yeah, I think I, I like the shirts. I'm, I'm pretty excited. I think I'm going to get one for myself and one for my son. And yeah, I, I could hey, probably Daddy. rather wear one of those. You know, we're we're pretty excited about it on the Night Court show because it's also going to provide us a little bit of funding to do some extra things that we we've, we've been wanting to do. Quite honestly, that financially it's been difficult for us to kind of pull together. But uh, we're going to see some bigger things. We're going to jump off of X. We'll have our uh, our website up up and running very soon. And uh, we're going to bring some uh, better content. And I said, well, we're going to bring more content. I think our content's excellent right now, but we're going to continue that excellent streak with yeah. the uh, new content that's coming out. Uh, look for some podcasts, some recorded um, uh, content that will be available very soon. And these T-shirts actually help us put that stuff on the table. So we appreciate everyone's support. Uh, it's I've got, I think I've got 50 more left out of the initial order. So I can take 50 more right now, but I can do more than that. 
uh, just let me know as, as soon as possible if you guys are interested. But uh, give me a DM on X and I'll get you set up. Do you have a picture of uh, this month's shirt that someone can buy that it can show up on the screen? Stand by. And uh, I think what Joe was saying is it started off with audio only content and now it's kind of transformed into also video content with audio and also an X space stream that's combined. So it's kind of morphing into something else, which is cool, which is cool. I can't wait to get my shirt. I've got it on order. You had it on order. I'm sure there'll be a contest where you take a picture of your shirt, you post it online with the whatever hashtag, and then everyone's getting it. It'll just catch on fire. Um, and if I know Joe Lanou like I know Joe Lanou, it'll be something about how much he loves Donald Trump. <laughs> That's the <laughs> truth. Yeah, it's like if you talk about Donald Trump longer than like 15 minutes, Joe's like, all right, change the subject, man. Let's talk about guns or police or something. <laughs> Speaking of police, uh, police force and shows like that, I know that on Friday nights, Night Court is live in video format on StreamYard. Uh, you can watch Night Court. It's usually a video edition on Fridays. That's still happening tonight, Joe? He's working on getting a shirt. Yes. He, he, yes, it is happening tonight. And also today at 3 o'clock, uh, Kingdom Radio will have someone from Omaha, Nebraska, showing some new products for the people who are in our genre, a little Christmas product, oh, cool. Christmas in July uh, show and tell will be today at three on Kingdom Radio. So no, a lot great. of cool things. Anyone else have something to plug? I know cash is on every single day at 2 p.m. Eastern, one central and uh, in the West Coast, uh, whatever hell time he has to start that show to make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's that? What's your show about uh, cash? What you got to plug? It's 11 a.m. on Pacific, 2 p.m. Um, Eastern. It's it's just it's on uh, politics uh, from the national uh, federal government in the mainstream media, uh, Monday through Friday, and then do some videos on the weekends, and then whenever news breaks. So all you have to do is just really mash that like and subscribe button. So whenever he comes out a new show, regardless of where in the country you are, it'll give you that alert and say, "Hey, you're missing something." Or you've missed something, you can go back and watch it. Cash Loren show. And yeah, let's, let's don't forget that Cash is uh, also part of the We the People Live Network, uh, content creators network. He's one of the content creators in there, and he's uh, one of the few that keeps a very regular show on a daily basis. Uh, as much as we may disagree on uh, Trump wearing uh, angel wings, uh, we don't disagree on many other things when it comes to our politics, but the cash show is actually very good. His commentary is excellent. You should check it if you haven't checked it out. I think one thing Joe and I can both agree on is that Donald Trump has made America great again. Yes. And there's still more work to do. So check, uh, speaking of which, take a Jeez, look. At just, to, just at the second I start to agree with you, you say something crazy. Donald Trump hasn't made anything great again. He's just a political figure. But let's talk there, about this shirt. It's yeah, there you boat. go. Uh, that's that's our first shirt coming out for June. Uh, it's got uh, 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 this is not necessarily a founding father quote, but I find one I find it being one that as a, uh, a vet, military veteran, particularly that it's a very profound that uh, blood makes you relative, but loyalty makes you family related. It goes into uh, blood is uh, thicker than water, saying many believe that that says that family is is uh, a closer relationship than any other when that. Uh, that Shakespearean quote actually is the opposite that the blood shed by brothers in battle is thicker than water of the womb, meaning that the, the bond that, that war fighters and veterans form uh, is a stronger bond than in most cases than a family bond. But uh, that's our first show, a uh, first shirt coming out for uh, June folks. It's a, uh, it's a $30 donation. Shoot me a DM. I'll get you set up on it. Uh, like I said, I've got 50, I believe left in the queue that we've already pre-ordered, but if we go over that, I can get more uh, shipped and, and ordered as long as I know uh, before the third. So appreciate it. And uh, shoot me a DM. I'll get you set up. Yeah, 100%. And I also see we have a new person on here without an avatar, but it is the person who's probably on the J-O-B like every other Blue collar American, Mr. Range Minded Podcast. What's that? not the range minded? The Let's range bring him minded. up. Let's talk about uh, Ronald Reagan is losing some gun rights. Range. Yeah, no, he has he has a bone to pick with cash. He's like, man, I can't wait to get set him straight. Here's what's up, Range. Uh, Damn it, Cash! Hey. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> 
Just kidding, my friends. We agree on a lot. Damn, Damn Kingdom, Kingdom, you gonna let really Cash uh, mute him like that? Yeah, that, that's Cash, that was wrong, man. Cash is like, look, I ain't got nothing to say to this guy. What's up, Cash? Let me hear you defend yourself with uh, with range minded. Well, you know, as we know, I'm I'm obligated by a contract that I've never seen or never signed to answer any question that is asked to me. And uh, well, I would say Reagan I replaced Jimmy Carter, and is your life not better because of it? So, I mean, people thought so. Jimmy Jimmy Carter didn't uh, push uh, gun rights or gun uh, legislation. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about Cash is uh, wanting Trump to take office because they want something to happen to the gun rights. I thought that's where it all started, right? Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rain, Range already jumped off, so. Yeah, he, he said his piece and he was gone. Uh, so, well, no, but we can talk about uh, me and Joe. We're going to do a show on Sunday night, and I think we agreed to talk about this somewhat. There was a Trump that uh, Joe, I think, is upset about is with uh, his executive order. To take away bump stocks on um, what semi all those all semi automatic weapons. So I'm sure something you could talk about, and we'll discuss it Sunday night at 5 p.m. Eastern or 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. That our weekly show Sunday night. Right. Yeah, we'll also talk about uh, his push for red flag laws that uh, he said you don't need due process. We're going to take the guns immediately, but uh, of course that couldn't even get past his personal lawyers. And we do have range minded that definitely wanted to finish yelling at you. What's up, range? You back on, brother? No, nah, he's ha he's having technical difficulty. He says he's out. In the uh, yes. So Shop once we're please. real quick, since we're done here, Joe, are you are available for a phone call once we're off air? I think he's back. Uh, I am available. You're going to give me about twenty minutes. I've got a phone call to uh, take immediately when we're done. But yeah, sure. Okay, you just want to call me when you're done? You have my number, right? Yeah, I've got your number. I'll call you. Oh, there's now. Time. If you want to call and uh, uh, do some more bitching and moaning, I mean, sure. There's, I'll, there's I'll make time for that. There he is right there. Yeah, so right. I, that yeah. other one was a, a decoy, if you will. That's weird, man. They had a presidential limousine with the decals and someone who looks like Trump in the back taking off. That was that's That's weird. That was wow! Wow! I would say he is a a, a strong supporter of DJT. Who's that? Cash? No, the the guy in the fall limo. Or... Oh yeah, I would I would say for you hundred percent. Yeah, that's a faux Trump. <laughs> yeah, he has the he has like the the autograph, like you know, perfected and all that. All right, let's go through some closing words, man. Before we jump off of here, uh, Big Ron, you uh, line them up, dog. You got it first. I want to thank everybody for listening in today. It's a good show. I um, want to remind everybody about the show tonight. Make sure you follow your host, your co-hosts. If you want to see more content like this, come on in. This is every night, Monday through Friday, guys. Yeah, and Big Ron is a class act. He's one of the most knowledgeable people that, you know, you don't really get to hear talk enough so go to big underscore Ron underscore on X and definitely follow him. He does not have enough follows with how much content and how great of content that he brings to the table. Uh, that's 100%. Uh, Grizzly Greg, what you got, Doc? Um, well, I got a couple of things I wanted to throw out. The, um, thing, Yeah, throw out there, actually. So I think on the, on the whole Donald Trump making America great again, I, I, I just like to insert my thoughts on that. And that is that um, Trump's a smart guy. You know, he has the ability to, to look out th over the landscape and observe what's going on. And I think that's the deal with the Make America Great movement. I think he's a smart guy that is capitalizing on something that he saw happen and he had um, similar ideas. He's a figurehead. And, and if Trump goes away tomorrow, the MAGA movement continues. I don't know who leads it. Um, you know, but Trump obviously is a, is a very unique personality and has great um, resources and, and ability to make things happen for the Making America Great movement. So I don't think it's him per se making America great. And I don't think it's him, you know, stirring up this movement. The, the people are just fed up. They're flat out pissed off. If anything, he's at the center of that movement because the left puts him at the center of it. 
right? And they keep overplaying their hand and, and, and the movement just gets bigger and bigger and the people get more pissed off. So that's my, my view on that. Um, Trump is making America great, but not because of, not because he's a Superman and has a cape, right? He's, he's leading a movement of the people. And I think that's important to recognize. And that's all I got. And uh, I, <clears throat> thanks for having me on. And I think it's been a great show and a great talk. And everybody go out and get yourself a night court shirt. Hell yeah. Hey guys, folks. Uh, Grizz is also a uh, co-host on the night court with Joe Lanou uh, Monday through Friday. He also deserves some uh, good likes and or good follows. And you might like some of the stuff he puts out there. He's a, he's a grumpy old bear, but uh, definitely a vital part of our, uh, our cast on night court. Thank you, Grizz. A grumpy old bear. I've been called Chris. It's all right. <laughs> he, he lives up to his avatar, folks. Uh, <laughs> but he's 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 usually right on right on target with his uh, grumpiness. And uh, vet uh, vet LT, uh, we're just saying our final thoughts as we jump off. You have something to share, brother? I am having technical issues. I hope you guys hear me. I yep. just want to say that uh, Grizz is right. I don't think the make America great thing like Donald Trump's doing on his own, just the things that are happening to him and the events surrounding him are inspiring people to see what's go not inspiring, but opening people's eyes and seeing what's going on and making people understand that this is not what we want this to be this this great country of america what is it what turning into and uh hopefully more people will wake up i think his rally in new york should said a lot especially in a state like that and uh you know hopefully uh we have brighter futures to come because uh my wallet cannot take any more of this inflation amen amen what you got cash so it's, like I said, it's uh, at the Cash Lawrence Show, all over social media. Our li show is live Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. And then Joe and I, we do a Sunday night show once a week with rotating um, people on the show, talk about different subjects. And that would be Sunday nights at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern. Yeah. And if you have a podcast and you want your podcast on We The People Live, if you want to figure out how to go in there, there is a content creators group where we talk about different content and ways to elevate your podcast. Uh, that could be something you could also be interested in. Uh, definitely message Joe Lanou on X and he can get you set up or cash will get you set up with that content creators group which is a, a little nugget for someone who's trying to get to the next level. Um, I'll go ahead and say right here that I think the America that I signed up for to join the military and defend this country that I love, I think that we need to have leadership in there that's going to bring these men and women that just want to wave the American flag. They want to fight for our country or definitely sign the piece of paper that says, do what, do with me as you will. I will give my life for this country. We need to get back to that. And um, as I seen just just today, uh, as of early this morning, that um, the Joe Biden and the administration has given Ukraine the green light to start firing missiles uh, that are American missiles into Russia or um, uh, into Vladimir Putin's backyard. So, you know, right now we need a strong leader that can lead by strength. And I'm hoping that it's going to be Donald Trump, but I just, regardless if it's Donald Trump or not, we just need a strong leader that America can come together and stop being divided, come together, and we can all wave the red, white, and blue uh, proudly moving forward because I love America. Even though New York is crap, New York is in America. We need America to come together. So make sure November 5th, or if not before, November 5th, don't just run your mouth, go out there and vote, cast your vote for the person who you think is going to bring America together and let's come together somehow, some way, but we, the people live, we're trying to bring people together. That is our gift to bring people together. And I appreciate you listening. What you got, Joe? Close it out, bro. I tell you what, um, I think what we're seeing with the Trump trials are the smoke. We need to address the fire. The fire is an under underlying burn that's happening more than to than just Donald Trump. 
Uh, we did a show on Night Court not long ago, uh, over 200 folks in there, and the simple question of what is MAGA. Uh, and I'll tell you, during the whole two-hour show, nobody stepped up and said MAGA was Donald Trump. Everyone stepped up and said it's about us, the people, figuring out how this country needs to run and getting together and shedding the colors of our, our team jerseys for Republican and Democrat and getting together as American people and speaking. That's encouraging to me. And if that's what MAGA means to most of the people, then I, w I would consider myself uh, MAGA. Now, when was America great? That's an argument. Is it uh, do we want to go back to the 50s uh, in, in some places like some people think some people think so. Some people don't. But I think it's for us as Americans to figure out. I don't believe that it, whether it be Donald Trump, Joe Biden, uh, it, name any other politician that stands up and says that they're going to carry the, the standard of freedom for us. I think that's all a lie. No one's going to carry the standard of freedom for us. We have to count, uh, carry it ourselves, just as uh, Thomas Jefferson said. We're the only one that we can rely upon to keep ourselves free. And I think that we have wholesaled that out. I think that uh, America, going back to probably the last 40 years, we have relied upon our, our political affiliation party or some candidate that's going to go do our fighting for us. And by God, it's we've lost. It's that's not the way it is. We've got to come together and just agree as Americans that at least we all want to be free. Uh, let's start there and then we can work everything else out because that's what our founding fathers intended. That's why they fought the British. This is why they they painstakingly put together word by word of the U.S. Constitution and the Bill of Rights to ensure that uh, uh, the future of a more perfect union. And I hope someday we actually get we haven't hit the perfection yet. I hope someday we actually get there. But I don't believe we're going to get there with behind a political leader. We've got to get there by standing shoulder to shoulder as Americans. Amen. Uh, and folks, we don't miss our night court episode tonight. We're going to go over law enforcement um, police video reviews. We've got some very interesting ones. It's a simulcast. We do both video and an in space show. Uh, if you haven't caught one of a, a night court, this is a good night to catch it. Shoot me a uh, DM. I'll make sure you get a personal invite to it uh, and give us a follow. All my co-hosts have the blue rings on it. They're all great follows and uh, very dedicated folks to bringing you good content uh, five nights a week. Thanks, guys. Peace. They want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. It's very simple. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. They want you silenced. And I am the only one that can save this nation because you know they're not coming after me. They're coming after you. And I just happen to be standing in their way and I will never be moving. On November 5th, 2024, justice will be done. We will take back our country and we will make America great again. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great job.